Ninja Gaiden began life in arcades in 1988 as a beat-em-up, where players took control of a nameless blue ninja looking to take down an evil cult. Home versions followed and it was the popularity of the NES version in particular which saw the series really take off. The ninja was given a name, Ryu Hayabusa, the gameplay was switched to action platforming, and two sequels followed. The series was modernised in 2004 with Ninja Gaiden releasing for the Xbox and it is the later released enhanced versions of that game and its two sequels that make up this master collection for the Nintendo Switch. Is it Go Ninja Go or No Ninja No? Well thank you to Koi Tecmo for the review code and now let's find out. So as mentioned then, the Ninja Gaiden collection brings together the three games in the more modern series. These are all hack and slash action games which take place in 3D environments. Sigma is an enhanced port of 2004's Ninja Gaiden for the Xbox and released for the PlayStation 3 in 2007. Sigma 2 released in 2009 for the PlayStation 3 and was a heavily altered version of Ninja Gaiden 2 which came out for the Xbox 360 in 2008. It introduced new bosses and playable characters, but reduced the amount of enemies present on screen at one time and also lowered the amount of blood and gore. A day one patch is going to restore the blood to this version of Sigma 2. Finally, you have Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, which is an enhanced port of Ninja Gaiden 3. Razor's Edge released initially on the Nintendo Wii U in 2012. You play as Ryu Hayabusa for the most part, although there are other playable characters available at times, including characters from the Dead or Alive universe, as Ryu had starred as a fighter in that series by this point. You follow a fairly linear path through a number of chapters set across a variety of settings, taking on a large number of enemies across the stage before fighting a boss at the end of each one. Whilst all three games follow this similar premise and share many other similarities such as special moves, wall running and jumping, and gaining new weapons to mix things up, they do also feel quite different in some respects. The first game feels the most like a ninja game, in fact it feels like a 3D interpretation of the NES Ninja Gaiden game in some ways. Combat is more measured, the platforming is still quite prevalent, there are traps to avoid and keys to find. The second leans a little heavier towards action and has quite a dark, gritty, futuristic feel, whereas the third game removes practically all nuance, dialing things up to 11, and while still quite enjoyable, it does lose a little something here for me, becoming a typical action game, grading each enemy encounter, and refilling your health between each over-the-top set piece. As I mentioned briefly just now, new weapons can be found ranging from swords, staffs, talons and bows as well as health refill items being scattered about and there are also shops to frequent where you can buy items with your currency that you earn through defeating enemies or you can at times upgrade your weapons here. Razor's Edge adopts a slightly different approach with the karma that you build up in battles being able to be spent on ninja skills by accessing the menu via the minus button and this can be done at any time rather than waiting to find a shop. You can upgrade your weapons, earn new moves, or increase your maximum health to name but a few. Now it has to be said that these games are very difficult. The enemies hit hard and are relentless in their pursuit of Ryu. You can easily find your life bar reduced in next to no time, and losing a life will mean you have to restart from the last save point you reached. The first game is particularly punishing for this, the other two to be fair do deploy some auto save points as well as the manual ones. The block button is essential in getting through the hordes of enemies in one piece and as you begin to earn new moves you will start to be able to counter attacks for example which does help you through. I would say with some certainty that these games would fall into the rage quit category for some people so I suppose you need to question your own tolerance for such games before picking this one up. I found that after a bit of a culture shock on the first levels, although it did remain just as hard afterwards, I had acclimatised to the difficulty by this point and started to enjoy the challenge. There are a few difficulty options for all three games, with normal still being difficult, but the masochists among you can attempt hard and extra hard modes, or there is also a hero mode for those that want a slightly less difficult time. This grants a few perks depending on which game you are playing, such as an auto block coming into play after you've taken a certain amount of damage. Personally, I found the third game the most difficult, mainly down to how much there was going on on the screen at the time, with explosions, gunfire, helicopters, etc. It just felt like a very different experience. 
The combat wasn't as satisfying, and while certainly not a bad game, I ended up treating it much more as a turn your brain off sort of game than the other two. Control wise all three games handle pretty similarly. You move with the left stick, Y is your weak attack and X your strong attack. Special moves are generally carried out by a combination of these two buttons once you have earned them. Pressing L or ZL depending on the game enables your block and holding block and moving the left stick allows for an evasive move, a roll in Sigma and a dash in the other two games. I found the roll to be much more responsive than the dash that replaced it and for my personal taste suited the fluid nature of the combat much better but this may have just been down to personal preference. The camera is controlled by moving the right stick and whilst the movement itself is fine there are a few occasions when the camera will switch perspective mid battle to something that isn't overly useful or will disorient you to the point where you end up going back the way you've already been once the fight is over. Gameplay is fast paced, action packed and bloody difficult. It does feel as if the quality of the games degrades with each subsequent release, with the first feeling like a choreographed martial arts film and things descending into generic slasher territory by the time you get to the third one, but nonetheless, I enjoyed them all in their own way and gameplay gets 17 out of 20. Controls hold up pretty well, although the menus are quite clunky nowadays and the camera does have a tendency to do what it wants at times and overall they score 15 out of 20. When it comes to the visuals, all three games have their own unique feel. The first feels very traditional with a lovely soft, almost washed out colour palette. The second feels much darker, whereas the third goes full modern warfare with deserts, soldiers, saturated colours and copious amounts of gore. This makes for a nice level of variety in locations and you'll find yourself taking on sword wielding foes on a rickety old bridge while Cherry Blossom falls gently to the ground in one game to shred in gun toting villains in a dystopian London in the next. All three games run at 60 frames per second with some fluctuation in Razor's Edge although never below 50. It appears as if they have employed dynamic resolution scaling in order to maintain the frame rate and this does lead to times where the resolution does drop. Level 2 in Sigma 2 is a particularly strong example of this, having moments where things look quite pixelated. There isn't as much anti-aliasing in the third game as in its predecessors, possibly to maintain performance, seeing as it is the only one that does drop slightly anyway. In handheld mode things run smoothly, the image was perhaps a little blurrier, but nothing that would cause a problem at all, and the text size was absolutely fine and caused no issues. In terms of the audio, well it follows a very similar path to the visual styles for the respective games. The first game is quite understated, yet sets the tone fantastically well. The second and third games are much louder and more bombastic in terms of their musical score. All three games contain voice acting at certain points, with the quality of this varying quite wildly, but it does add to the cheesy storytelling and enhances the experience in its own way. Visuals still look pretty sleek to this day, minus a few minor issues and the variety in levels and across the games is certainly welcome. They get 16 out of 20. Audio complements its respective game well, suiting the style and the tone of each and scores 17 out of 20. Ninja Gaiden Collection costs £32.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. The difficulty of the games makes it hard to accurately gauge how long it will take each individual to finish, but as a very widespread barometer, I would say anywhere between 10 to 15 hours per game. This would mean nothing if the games didn't hold up well, but as far as I'm concerned, they are still great fun to play, and I would say the price is fair, especially when factoring in the included DLC and extra game modes that these versions included, such as Ninja Race, Tag Mission, and Chapter Challenge. It could be argued that releasing them separately would have been more cost effective to the customer, with those that have a clear favourite being able to pick just that one game up, and it's unfortunate there is no western physical release with just an Asian version released so far, and whilst this particular factor won't affect the score, it is unfortunate nonetheless. Value scores 17 out of 20. To conclude, Ninja Gaiden Collection contains two very good games and one decent game which most people will have a lot of fun with, albeit this statement does come with a huge caveat that the aforementioned fun will only be had if you are on board with the high level of difficulty each game presents. The combat is fluid and satisfying to overcome and the settings are more varied between the games than you might initially anticipate. 
being the enhanced additions from back in the day brings a few other features such as game modes, costumes and playable characters. Ninja Gaiden games have always been tough going all the way back to the entries in the late 80s and early 90s and these games are no exception. Those up for a stern challenge will find it here, those susceptible to breaking control pads in fits of rage should probably steer clear. Ninja Gaiden Collection gets a switch up score of 82%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. I'd be interested to know which of the three games is your favourite, please do stick it in the comments section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.